So here's the question for my fellow mech warriors. When do you do death from above? Now, the Fritz answer for that is absolutely every single chance and opportunity. When we are talking about tabletop glory in that moment, we're going to go for it. I mean, you can't offer me that opportunity for immortality and not take it. But from that perspective, we're going to backpedal a little bit and try to look at this tactica. When does it make sense? How do we utilize it? And the question being, given all the conditions that need to happen along the way to pull this off, and even if you pull it off and grab that glory, there are consequences. Is it a viable tactical option? And I feel like Death with Glory, essentially for those of you who are new to the Battletech universe, these machines are massive. I mean, even a very light, a lower end light mech, it's, it's a fantastic piece of machinery. It moves very, very fast. It's very, very heavy. When we kick in those jump jets, now jump jets on a light mech are still heavy. That's a lot of tonnage to move. Jump jets on a medium, jump jets on a heavy. You are essentially kicking those jets in and trying to get that airtime and come down physically, physically on top of a mech and deliver that damage. I mean, literally death from above, jumping up like a flying mech jump kick, layering that capacity. So the Battletech rules, you know, they try to simulate this tabletop combat and, and take into account the, the military capacities of each machine. There's this idea, and I don't know the exact history, some of you out there might know, but in formulating what the mechs can do and thinking about it, I think it was put in there as a novelty because someone's going to ask, wait a second, if I can kick in these jets and hop over a building or, or jump over something else or change position, like why, why can't I bring it down on the mech itself or, or the vehicle from that capacity? So, of course, cooking up the rules. So the main challenge with Death From Above is the order that it happens in. What this means is first you need to be able to get into a position where you have jump capacity to an opposing mech. There's a little bit of navigation in the initiative order. So if I have a mech, well, obviously taking one step back, you need jump jets to make this happen. But from that capacity, having jump jets, I have to make sure that the target I want to jump onto literally has completed its move. It's completed its move. So depending on that initiative scale, and the positioning of my mechs and where I want to go, you might not always be in the right place to pull it off. I want to jump onto that Orion, but it's my turn to move, and the only mech I haven't moved is this one mech that's in position for death from above. I'm not going to be able to pull it off because I don't know where that Orion is going to go. So you need to make sure targets have completed movement ahead of time, and you can declare, I'm going to be making this death from above attack. Now, this is where things get out of phase a little bit. Because when you do the death from above, the prerequisite is it happens um, out of phase, similar to physical attacks. So opposing mechs are going to be able to get their shots in on you. Can they stop the death from above? Can they, in all effect, shoot you down? Depends on the mech. Uh, depends on the situations. Depends on, on what's going on. But there is somewhat of a chance to stop you. Now, assuming that doesn't happen... And this gets into the, the capacity where you have to ask yourself, so this is the first tactica. If I'm doing a death from above, and let's say it's a, it's a pretty beat up mech, it's a pretty beat up machine, you are calculating, can I, re, can I really stop, can I knock that mech out of the sky? Can I utilize that? And if I can, what layers, what level of firepower is it going to take to soak that up? Is it going to be even worth it? Because even if I don't shoot it out of the sky, if I don't stop the death from above attack in that moment... There's still a lot of other what ifs along the way. So is it really worth it? That, that's a calculation. And I, I've, I've seen both sides where uh, it was not stopped and a lot of damage was caused. It was stopped or uh, opponents sinking everything in, you know, concentrate all firepower on that, that one spider leaping through the air. And from that perspective, uh, stopping it. But again, at, at what cost? You just fired like three lances worth of stuff. So putting it from that perspective, where do we go? So we bypassed that. Well, now you have to see, do you actually hit? And whether you hit or not, the landing, and I'm simplifying the rules a little bit. You can see in the base game or the total warfare, just for the sake of this vlog, you have to hit. Hit or miss, you are still going to take damage to your mech because the sheer stress of landing and coming down with this drop kick 
on the legs and the lower part of your mech, at best, you're going to damage it. At worst, you're going to have to take some pilot rolls, make some checks, and, and maybe fall down in the process. Depending on how that damage transfers, you may t- literally tear your legs off of the mech. So there is going to be a price to be paid for that. But if you do hit, now we get into some interesting areas because the damage transfer is magnified. It's delivered with a chance to hit the upper portions of the mech, mainly the head. You're literally crashing down. And on top of that, depending on the damage in the situation, there's pilot checks for your opponent to take. So you can literally, if you get I won't say lucky because the chances are favored. You are going to crush assault backs. You're going to crush heavier machines. You're going to crush light machines. So it is a, a very scary tactic if you can pull it off, but there is going to be a high price to pay for it. The last time I, I did death from above, that was really glorious from that perspective. I had a spider mech. And uh, it, was in, it was in good condition. It was kind of trying to zap with the, the medium laser, get that rear armor. We, we were mixed up. Two lances mixed up. I think a catapult was in there, maybe a battle master in there. And, and it was just now, we're at this place, what's called danger close, meaning we are two or three hexes away from each other, our forward guns locked in on each other. We're not really backpedaling. We're not really pulling away from this combat. We're, we're in this. We're in this. I mean, this is now brawling time. So I've got this spider zipping around and I say to myself, I've got to do a little bit more damage. And there's, there's a chance for tabletop glory from here. So I do death from above on this catapult and I hit and I just crush it. And then I fall down, take a lot of damage to my legs, spiders damage, but we're still up. Make that pirate uh, pilot checks. Now I'm back up round two death from above on I think a Jaeger mech or something, an opposing Jaeger mech. Bam, hit it. Death from above. Don't destroy it. Do some damage. I fall down again. Now I'm really messed up. I mean, the legs are just like, like crushed. Get up, do another death from above, hit again. And then finally this time with the hit, I did the damage, but I fell and literally my legs just sheared off. And, and that was in the damage transfer, just like destroyed the, um, destroyed the spider. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Beyond the tabletop glory battle value. I, I made like two and a half times the amount. That's the best death or glory that I've ever done. Most of the time, it's, it's somewhat effective for the lulls. A lot of times, it's not really effective. So from that tactical perspective, opening moves, and I have been known to do this, like run in and just, just like death from above because I'm like, you know, that'd be pretty funny if I pull it off. I may have lost the game, but you remembered. You remembered that death from above. You said my name late at night. So from that perspective, it's worth the price of admission. But I find Death From Above um, early on in the game, not really, if we're really playing tactical. End of the game, when everybody's really beat up and your mech, you don't really know if it's going to hold up much longer or where it's going to go. At that point, it does become a very, very viable force multiplier, especially if you're in the medium tonnage. Because the medium tonnage is going to be able to deliver that transfer of force, but still take the tremendous shock of actually landing, and and of course with heavies more so.